Hi everyone, welcome to a new video. I don't really have a plan for today's video. I think I'm just gonna do a vlog. I'm gonna see where the day takes me. Today's a Friday and I don't really have anything planned today. I'm just going to try to chill a little bit. I'm feeling very burnt out from the lead up to Black Friday, well the early Black Friday sale for Gymshark which is actually still going on right now so I'll leave a link down below if you do want to check it out. But yeah, I just kind of want to catch up with you guys and show you a few of my recent purchases. I just did a beauty makeup sort of order and I've been ordering quite a few investment pieces for my wardrobe which is really exciting. Um, I know I've talked about it here and there especially during the first lockdown when I said I was building my classic fall slash winter wardrobe so I've been working on that behind the scenes so I'm excited to kind of bring you up to speed but the main thing is that I knew I was going to purchase a few investment pieces for the season one being a winter coat that's more of like an autumn into winter coat because I have a a couple from last year that are really good for winter into spring. I know that's like really specific but I personally like to have kind of set color palettes for each season. Anyway I can talk about that more later so I wanted to get a beautiful coat which I did manage to find one after hunting for a long time and I also wanted to get a beautiful investment pair of boots and I get, got a few very good durable practical ones the, my Fairfax and Favor ones so that was great but I wanted to get kind of a dressier pair with a little bit of a heel so I managed to find those really wanted to stock up and build an amazing knitwear collection of very high quality knitwear made out of natural materials which I can talk more about in a bit as well so yeah I've got quite a few things to chat to you about I thought I was having a pretty good hair day today this is actually day two hair I did one very great thing to come out of lockdown for me was a solid hair care routine or more of a hair styling routine because I'm able to kind of achieve consistently really good hair that lasts a few days so I don't have to do it every single day I know a lot of you guys have been interested in my hair because I've managed to grow it to where it is now this is all my natural hair yay <laughs> it took me a little while to get to where I am today with my hair so I'm very proud of it I know a lot of you guys have been asking or interested in um, what I do for my hair so if you still want to hear about that or if you're interested then let me know in the comments I don't think I'm going to be talking about it today so yeah just let me know but I will tell you that in order to achieve this sort of blowout look I do use the Dyson Airwrap hair styler so expensive eye-wateringly expensive at the time I was like oh I bought it going into lockdown but I was determined to get a really good hairstyle and I have just stubborn hair that's very fine and it's so hard to get curls in it so I did a ton of research and it sounded like the Dyson was the right choice for me and it turned out to be that it took a while to get used to it but here we are <laughs> bouncy day two hair so it's great anyway yeah that was my little intro clip and I'll get to showing you a few things sorry if I seem really tired by the way it's because I am very tired I'm in a chill mood <laughs> even after multiple coffees anyway <laughs> I bought this bed for Maple. He actually uses it. This is like the fourth time. Or the fifth, maybe. You love your bed, don't you? Oh, you done? Oh no. But it's that sort of fluffy. And this little boy has the best hair. Look at it. Oh, a little bit greasy though. You need a groom, you stinky boy. You stinky, Maple? <laughs> what a little baby. So I guess the first thing I'll show you is my outfit. So here it is. It's a nice cozy work from home outfit. So I'm wearing the really, really pretty table knit cardigan from Abercrombie. I got three of these and I don't regret it at all. I wear them all the time, just kind of as lounge wear um, over my pajamas in the morning. It just kind of makes me feel a little bit more like nice and put together than if I were to wear a dressing gown or a robe all the time. So I love it and it looks really cute with these trousers, which are just sort of like a lounge wear bottom from H&M. They're from last year, but I'll try to find something similar, but are really, really comfy, but 
cute monochromatic look in my opinion. I just love this cardigan. The detail is so nice on it. I think it's really good value for the price that I paid even though Abercrombie is kind of pricey compared to other brands. The quality is really really good and I definitely recommend it so I'll leave this link below. Hopefully there's sizes available and it's not sold out um, but it does have other colors but we'll, we'll see. <laughs> I'm not sure because I did purchase it a little while ago but hopefully they restocked it it's so nice so yeah that's my look for today and i'll show you so here's my makeup and beauty and hair care order really exciting this i ordered from look fantastic i love that site because they always have really good discount codes i think i got 20 percent off from ordering through their app so that was really good and i picked up a few of my favorites that i buy over and over again and then also a couple of new things so you'll see the olaplex here I have never tried this one before. This just came out the number zero. So I'm really, really excited to give this a try. I take my hair care very seriously. And since I do bleach it and I now use heat on it more often, I'm, I always try to um, use treatments on it as well to keep it he as healthy as possible and to avoid breakage. So um, I'm excited to give this one a try. Previously, I would have used the number three, which is um, sort of like a mask. You use it on damp hair before you shampoo. So, and I haven't read the instructions to see how to use this one yet. Oh, dry hair. I guess it makes sense that this one you would use first since it's the zero. And then the other ones you can only get at the salon. And I always get Olaplex every time I get my hair lightened. So definitely recommend that if you are a blonde. And I got, oh, this is a new one. I have not tried this before. I've been meaning to try it for over a year now. Bare Minerals is my absolute favorite makeup brand it is the only makeup brand that i will put on my base so on my face it's the only brand that doesn't break my skin out it's meant to be mineral makeup and it's supposed to not have any ill effects if you were to sleep in it definitely recommend this brand if you do have sensitive skin or skin prone to breakouts and clogged pores and that sort of thing so yeah, I absolutely love Bare Minerals and I'm trying to switch all of my base makeup over to that brand. So this is a highlighter and I've tried to get this before but it was sold out. So I'm really, really excited to give this a try. I'll take it out. So here it is and it's looking like the perfect color for me. It's sort of a champagne-y, rosy gold color and it's not really showing up on camera but I personally prefer this color for me because I have a warmer undertone complexion so i can't really do like any pinks they really need to be more gold but this looks very very pretty super shiny maybe i should swatch it or something camera is struggling to focus but that's the little swatch it's a very beautiful warm glow very natural but it still does have a very light sparkly iridescent effect which is my personal favorite for a highlight i don't like it to be too bold just a nice touch of shimmer and a glow so what else do i have here i've got a top up of my Laura Mercier translucent setting powder. I use this so much. I like to use it under my foundation because I use powder foundation. Um, I got two of these because I got a discount code so and I know I'm going to use them. But yeah, I use that to set my concealer before I use my powder foundation. This is also a really nice formula which is safe on sensitive slash acne prone skin so I love that. Highly recommend. I picked up another Anastasia clear brow gel because I I've been using that for years and this is a new one this is a mac lip pencil and i wanted a darker nude color so that i could line my lips with it and then kind of create that like, almost like lip contouring i wanted to give that a try i also got some bare minerals lipstick so this is what color is this spice I mean, when you look at it from that way they do look like a really good pair are they both called spice oh they are what a coincidence so i'm excited to give that a try because i don't actually ever really wear lipstick this is the first lipstick i've got in years i usually use lip liner and just a lip balm because my lips tend to be very dry so but i think this is a really good hydrating formula so i'm excited to give that a try and then i also have been meaning to get the new bare minerals mascara for a long time um, and i saw that they had this little pack i hear that the brush on this is really really unique and really good and i've just been looking for another mascara because mine is running out so that is my little beauty haul <laughs> sorry if that was very unprofessional show and tell but that's what we got i forgot one thing actually because i actually used this one this morning i couldn't help myself but i got myself a little bobby brown color corrector this is it and it's 
a peach color and it's meant to color correct under eyes and I can confidently say that it works amazing. I've never tried a color corrector before and I've only started getting dark under eye circles in the last few years because I get really bad allergies here in the UK. They just have completely different than they do in Canada, I believe. I don't know, but my allergies are just crazy here. Allergies cause dark under eye circles for a lot of people. This helps cover up my allergy dark under eye circles. It works incredible. So happy with that. I just like to use as little makeup as possible around my eyes because I've always had like kind of creasy under eyes. But I wanted to try out the lip stuff with you. This will be fun. <laughs> So we'll try the lip liner first. I have a little bit of lighter lip liner on my lips from this morning when I did my makeup. Probably not the most flattering of views. I'm actually so proud of my online shopping skills because this color is perfect. It's literally the exact color that I was going for. And I was just going off of the little digital swatches that they have. Okay, I'm so happy with that. I naturally have very strong borders around my lips, so I actually cannot overline my lips. It looks too obvious and it looks really bad, so I can't do it. The MAC lip pencils are so good. I usually buy the NYX lip pencils, which are a lot more affordable, but they just aren't as good as the MAC ones, so I thought I would treat myself. Also, I'm not naked. I'm wearing the little white Gymshark bralette from my last video. Such a nice comfy loungewear bralette. Highly recommend and it's on sale 20% off. <laughs> There's your plug. This is really really good. I really like the formula. It does feel really creamy and hydrating and it looks really really even despite my like crusty gross lips. Sorry about that. Yeah really dry right now. But yeah, that's a perfect color. It's a nice, warm, peachy nude. I love that. I think that's a really good combination. Oh, I'm so pleased. I'll leave them linked down below if you're interested. Bare Minerals is consistently good. I can always rely on this makeup brand, so I love it, and I'm definitely gonna be buying more from them. My foundation, my bronzer, and my blush are all from Bare Minerals, and I'm so happy I made the switch because when I used other brands of foundation, even other mineral foundations, like I used the MAC one, and I used just other bronzers that weren't mineral brown bronzers, I could literally see the texture that was caused by the makeup, and that has totally gone away since I switched, so love it, and I'll definitely try out more. And I'm excited to try the Olaplex as well because it makes a, such a big difference, like when I use the number three, my hair texture changes completely. The last time I had my hair done, I think the Olaplex treatment, for whatever reason, it just didn't get left on long enough. My hair was feeling like quite brittle and dry when in comparison, I usually leave the salon and my hair feels really, really conditioned. So I decided to do my Olaplex at home treatment with the number three and it literally like, it gave me that conditioned after salon feelings. I mean, I think it's the most evidence-based hair treatment out there so I definitely very much recommend it. It's like a day to night different if you have dry hair from bleaching. So yes, I very much recommend that. <sighs> oh, today's just one of those days where I could literally sit and just stare <laughs> into the distance or just lie in bed and watch YouTube or something all day. I don't have to be productive today. I've been very, very productive the last week, so I'm not putting too much pressure on myself. I was putting pressure on myself earlier in the week, but I found it was just making my burnout worse. So yeah, today we're just chilling. I'm just filming what I get up to and hopefully it will turn out to be a good video. So it's quite a few hours later now. I didn't end up picking up the camera this afternoon because I ended up helping my brother with his visa application for the last few hours. I think I'm gonna leave the video for the rest of the day and I'll pick back up whenever I see you next. The weekend might still be things related to the announcement, which will definitely be in the next video, by the way. So I won't be able to film that for this video, but yeah, I'll see you when I see you. Hi everyone. So it's just about a week since I last spoke to you on this vlog. I ended up taking a week off. It wasn't planned at all, but as you might have been able to tell in those clips, I was really tired and I just hit a wall. I was super burnt out. When I get really burnt out, I just have zero energy in my socializing tank and that goes for speaking on camera as well and i just sort of want to be a hermit i've always known that i've had that sort of cycle where i get burnt out 
almost on a monthly basis and then I'll work and work and work and try to catch up from maybe the few days that I took off at the beginning of the month or you know there'll be a big work event such as this past Black Friday <laughs> where I'll, I will kind of work over time and when you cram it definitely takes the fun out of things and that's sort of what happened i do a lot of things other than what you see on social media just due to how much ben works there's a lot of home things that i have to manage and a really big one right now is a secret project which the announcement is finally going to be in the next video which is so so exciting um, but all of that combined it has just been the busiest month of my life and it's finally when i decided that i need to break the cycle maybe some of you will be able to relate if you have had like body image issues or if you've had like eating issues or disorders around food or exercise that's never something that i've personally dealt with but for me i have really similar issues around work it's just how i was brought up my parents taught us how to eat healthy and never put any pressure around achieving a certain body or a certain look or any extremes with diet or exercise whereas work habits it wasn't always the best example and there was a lot of pressure put on myself and my siblings to be overachievers and to achieve like certain really high standards and to go after careers that you know weren't what we necessarily wanted to do but that might be like the best sort of <laughs> career so hopefully that gives you some insight into me as a person and why i struggle with like that sort of cycle of taking time off and then you know never really being that consistent on social media there's one like really big underlying reason which is what i just described it's in my psychology and then the second one is that i've never been able to fully dedicate you know full time to my job just because of how my life has played out the decisions that i've made i don't regret any of those and i'm really really happy with my life and where i'm at and i can definitely talk more about that if you guys are interested um, but it just has meant that you know i've never been able to have that full commitment to work and i've never had someone who might work alongside me which is really common in this industry so that sort of thing i'm totally fine with i'm really happy with how things are in my life it's just difficult to try to explain that because many of you might not have the experience of this type of job of running your own business and or co content creation and seeing kind of how much work goes in behind the scenes and how much you rely on other people because you know you obviously can't always be taking pictures of yourself or filming yourself and that sort of thing you do often need help oh and that's another thing my brother did leave to go back to get his visa things are looking good he's having to fly to toronto to submit his application which just went into a lockdown but his appointment hasn't been cancelled he should be able to get the application submitted and get a response before his flight back to the uk which we have already booked so either way he's coming back which is really really good news he's definitely going to get his visa positive thinking if in the case that it doesn't though he will have more visitor status time here so he can always try again in six months hopefully when things with covid has calmed down that was a huge rant but i kind of wanted to get all of that off my chest this whole thing of my work habits and stuff has been a really big insecurity of mine and it's not something that i've ever really wanted to talk about or even had the words to sort of explain i definitely still struggled with verbalizing it today but hopefully you understand and that provides a little bit more insight but either way i'm back i'm really motivated to finish this video i want to have one good vlog before i publish the special announcement which will clarify a lot i think you guys will totally understand like what's been taking up my attention the last several months now although i took time off work this week i really really focused on that there was a lot of work that had to be done and i feel so much better having done that i also got tons of laundry done which is the type of chore that if you have enough clothes left over you can't bring yourself to do it if you have so much other work to do so it was just so nice and cleansing to like wash all the sheets wash the towels and do all of my own personal laundry so that was really really good i worked out a few times without the pressure of filming it that was really good too sometimes it's just nice to work out for myself i still put on a cute outfit and i just tuned the world out and did my workout and it felt so good because my workouts have been really inconsistent due to everything in the past while so yeah that was nice oh by the way this top has not been released i don't think i don't think it's available on the website because the logo um, there's an issue with the logo so just athletes got sent it i don't think i'm technically supposed to be wearing it but 
it's really nice and cozy and I really like this matching tracksuit so I'm wearing it now before I do some try-ons of the things that I mentioned that I would show you last week. So we're gonna do that today. I bought all of this stuff before Black Friday, um, before I knew that I was gonna have to work like crazy to get my, my Gymshark early Black Friday video out. I knew I wouldn't really have a lot of time to order things before they might have sold out during Black Friday, so that's why I wanted to order them ahead of time even though I might miss out on discounts here and there. Hopefully some of these things are still in stock and on sale if you guys are interested in purchasing them. So I think I need to put on lunch really soon. But I think after that, I will do some trying on. I'm really excited. <laughs> I've been looking forward to this. Yeah, this is just the type of content that I love to do, but I rarely feel justified in doing it because I have so many other things to do and I've sort of felt like I established a certain niche for myself, which I know isn't really the case on YouTube. I've sort of decided to post what I want and it's been really fulfilling, but I don't feel like I give myself enough time to do that. Whereas now, like I said, I've broken the cycle and that is what I'm doing from now on. I'm only posting stuff that I'm really interested in and I find that ends up being vlogs because I have the choice of showing like whatever I feel like in that vlog, whether it's decluttering, a bit of fashion, or some fitness and meals and workouts and whatever. So, and I know you guys really like vlogs, which I really appreciate. Okay, I'm gonna stop rambling and just show you a few things. Ooh, ooh, the postman is here and I think I have something coming in the mail. <laughs> So this is what just came in the mail. Oh my gosh, I love it. As you can tell, it's a pleated plaid tweed mini skirt and it looks like it's gonna fit at the waist, which is perfect and it flares out so it will definitely fit. I'm so excited to try it on. It is a brown and black plaid with a little bit of pink, which is so pretty. This is my take on the tennis skirt trend and I'm gonna pair it with woolly sort of cable knit jumpers rather than the like varsity jumpers because as I've told you guys many a time now, I prefer a more classic style, but I still, still want to nod to the trend sometimes and this is just something that I love anyway. Plaid tweed. I'm really getting into it. This is a skirt that I had previously bought. This is from Dubry. So beautiful and I actually did get this one really on sale. I got it half off on the website. I'll see if I can link these two skirts for you. This was clearance and I think I got the 100 pounds off this. I, these are both beautiful quality skirts, um, premium brands. I would even say Dubry might fall under the designer category. It's kind of more of a heritage designer brand from Ireland. So beautiful. And this is meant to look like a lady's mini kilt, which is so pretty. Another new purchase is this Isabel Marant Etoile. Isabelle Marant Etoile, if you want a French accent. <laughs> I do speak French. I'm a little bit rusty. And I learned French growing up in Canada. So it definitely is a little bit Canadian. If you are from France, then you might dislike my ancient French accent because that's what the Quebecois accent is. It's like more rural sort of sounding. Anyway, <laughs> I got this Isabelle Marron jumper and it is so beautiful. I did not get this one on sale. It had a very big price tag, but I was lusting over it. I saw Lydia Millen got it and then once she got it and tried it on, it was game over. So I'm wondering if this might be in the sale. I purchased it before Black Friday because I was worried it was going to sell out in my size, which is the smallest size, even though it's quite oversized. I got a 34. I know that price tag. Um, but I got it from Farfetch. I love Farfetch. If you haven't heard of them before, they are a website that sort of amalgamates independent boutiques. So when you purchase from Farfetch, you're inadvertently or indirectly supporting local small businesses from all over the world. So I really love that about them. So that's the jumper that I plan on matching with these skirts. I did also get this one that I just, oh, sorry about that bit. Gross, <laughs> my makeup wipes in there. So yeah, I got this sweater as well. This one is from an Irish heritage brand as well. It's called Erin Woolen Mills. Erin Knit Style is sort of what cable knits originated from in Ireland, if I'm not mistaken. So I got this one. I'm willing to pay extra to have beautiful wool knits because to me, they make all of the difference. They are temperature regulating. You don't sweat in them and they're so, so warm. Like you could get away with wearing these with just maybe one layer underneath and not need to wear a coat even in like zero degrees. Maybe that's just the Canadian in me, but they're so, so warm and insulating. So to me, it was worth it. This one is a little bit itchy, but I plan on layering it and 
to me again it's worth the slight itchiness for getting such a beautiful wool knit this one is a super soft merino so it is not itchy in the slightest i'll wear this with nothing underneath and i have it in another color as well but it's just dirty right now because i wear it all the time i did purchase quite a few of these probably not the best way to show you but these are cotton flannels beautiful quality as well this is from uniqlo i love this brand for basics i think it would fall under the fast fashion category but you just get such beautiful beautiful basics in there i did also get a few cashmere roll necks which i wear to death in the winter they're my absolute go-to um, i purchased three of them from uniqlo i think they're such a great place to purchase these i really hope they have a sale on i will link everything down below for you if you are interested and another one in just a plain white and the purpose of these is to layer underneath these woolly jumpers so that you can get that really nice english heritage look but also does play into that trend with the layering and the pleated tennis skirts. So I'm very much looking forward to that outfit. I'm so excited. Also got this beautiful British trilby hat. So this is like a smaller version of a wool fedora and it is a country style hat. I'm really getting into my country fashion as you might be able to tell. Love this so much and this has um, the pheasant feathers on it which is very much English countryside inspired. And this is from Hicks and Brown. I did purchase one from Holland Cooper which I love that brand so much, but I have such a small head that the size small did not fit me, sadly. So I ordered one from Hicks and Brown in a size extra small. So I'll try that on today too. And just quickly, I did get this Baker Boy cap from Holland Cooper. Oh, such beautiful branding and beautiful quality. That's my thing now. I'm investing in quality and it makes all of the difference. Such a gorgeous brand. Definitely my favorite right now for country attires. I'm really embracing living in England and enjoying the quintessential British fashion. So, so one more thing that I want to show you, maybe two. So we have these boots. Oh my gosh, they are just beautiful. So this is another English heritage brand called Grenson and they were established in 1866. So this is another long-standing brand that has lasted through the years due to its quality and you can really see that in these. These are gorgeous traditional hiking boots. I am in love. I love my Fairfax and Favor boots, which I have showed you in a few videos ago when I did my Abercrombie haul. But I really wanted a quality pair that had really good treading on the bottom, good for countryside walks if it gets a little bit more muddy and you need more grip. And I wanted them to be kind of more of an ankle boot style, but I just love the beautiful lace up of these and in the gorgeous tan leather as well. Quality of footwear makes all of the difference. These are fully leather lined. I know this isn't for any vegans, but um, I'm personally not myself a vegan and I prefer to invest in natural materials. It, makes the difference for me beyond comfortable because they actually mold to your foot anyone who knows quality footwear will be able to attest to that so these are fully leather constructed with a rubber sole just absolutely gorgeous another investment piece but hopefully there'll be sales to be had on this so i'll try to find the best sale and link it down below for you just absolutely stunning and they did come with brown laces but i switched them for these beautiful white sort of ivory color to make them look a little bit more vintage and i love that i cannot wait to style these in an outfit i just love 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 heritage brands i find you get such good value for your money these are definitely no exception i've only tried these on inside the house so i need to try them on outside but um just from what i've felt and seen with these i would definitely invest in a second pair so highly recommend and speaking of quality and full leather construction here are my fairfax and favor boots these ones were kindly gifted to me from fairfax and favor honestly beyond grateful for that i cannot believe that i was gifted these it's incredible but i actually did purchase my first pair which are my dark brown leather pair which i wear all of the time literally all the time i love them so much so i really wanted to get a second pair and these are in the tan suede i've sprayed them down so that they'll last in the winter weather but absolutely gorgeous boots and i love the equestrian look Look of these i find them so easy to style so yeah that's another new in item oh guys i knew i was going to invest in designer boots this season these ones are the ones that i invested in last year these are what started my obsession with quality footwear it's so beautiful like so so comfortable despite having a high heel 
I just love these so much. This brand is Paris, Texas, by the way, and you can get them on Farfetch as well. So I'll try to link some similar down below, um, but they come in all different colors. Highly, highly recommend those if you do like the pointy toe and the thicker high heel. But yeah, I knew that I was gonna invest in another pair this year. I wasn't sure what ones. I've expressed my love for Josie, AKA Fashion Mumblers YouTube channel. I love her style. It's really hard to find YouTubers with that sort of elegant in classic styles. Might as well flip you around to talk to you. So yeah, I found Josie's channel at the beginning of the first lockdown. Myself and Ben have really loved watching her vid videos ever since. She's really inspired me and gave me some entertainment during this whole crazy year and she inspired these boots. So definitely check her out if you guys are looking for a new channel to watch. But yeah, anyway, back to these boots. These are the Chloe boots. I know. I never would have thought that I would have invested in something like this. These were definitely, definitely investment, definitely a huge price tag, but to me, so worth it. And what made me lean towards these is my new belt from Gucci. This was my first investment of this season. I've worn this with so many different things. It looks so beautiful over dresses. It just really elevates your entire look. It takes a less expensive dress and makes it look like it could be designer. So that's what I love about investing in designer accessories, belts, bags, and footwear. These boots are pretty much an exact match for the belts. I couldn't resist. I think the boots are looking lighter on camera, but that's just because they're reflecting more light from the window right now because the belt is a bit further back, but they are pretty much identical in person. I knew I was gonna invest in my footwear this year, so I do not regret it, and I'm so excited to show you those on as well. So we're gonna do a whole try on of my new looks for fall and winter because I've been busy prior to all of the madness of this month been busy building my wardrobe and I guess I can show you this bag as well. This has turned into a full show and tell but this is my beautiful Chloe bag. I actually got this one second hand through Vestier Collective. I got so lucky with this like I actually feel like I love attraction manifested this bag but I got it for such a good price as well. And that completes my library of brown accessories. So, so happy with that. And I'll show you everything on after I turn off the beeping that is the oven right now. is honestly one of my favorite things on the planet. So good. Mm. As you saw, I also have a full meal for later, which I could use for either a dinner or for lunch. And I always make an extra when I'm making this meal. Excuse me, sir. No, get down. Get down. Boy, mister. Stole and ate a whole rotisserie chicken last night. And we had to call emergency vets. He's totally asymptomatic. So, that was not good. That was a bad boy. That was a bad boy. Okay, calm down. The vet said, the vet said that you're not supposed to be, to be boisterous. Honey. <laughs> this is what cocker spaniels are like. Calm down. Time for your nap. The camera probably isn't picking it up, but the golden light shining through right now is just amazing. I appreciate it so much. The sunshine streaming in from this side of the house is just glorious. Look at the beautiful blue sky. Okay, so I just ate my lunch, which I showed you. It was so good. I have that meal a lot. I always do two salmon fillets at the same time because they usually come in a pack of two. I always make extra broccoli and potatoes so that I have enough for a second meal. It always comes in handy later and it's my version of meal prep because I don't really like meal prepping and I also don't like the taste of food that sat in the fridge for longer than two days so that lasts for a couple of days and I'll usually eat it within that time period because it's such a good meal and it's so good reheated in the microwave you just have to rest the lid on top and sort of steam it for one and a half minutes usually and that's enough so that's such a great meal idea and when I was preparing the salmon I always pierce the salmon then I use lemon juice 
then balsamic vinegar, and then maple syrup for sweetness, and then I sprinkle on some dill, and I just love that flavor combination. It takes like two seconds to make, so highly recommend that. Also, when I was down there preparing my food, sorry, <laughs> with that I'm just gonna put you on a tripod. So yeah, I watched my clip back when I was explaining my psychology around my work habits and that sort of thing. I feel like I was not really clear. And before I get into the fun try on part, I'm just going to clarify a little bit more. So when I was relating it to body image and issues surrounding food, that's kind of like a light sort of psychological disorder that's really easy to develop just based on society or popular media or your parents that you essentially develop unhealthy habits. I developed unhealthy habits around work. My parents were the type of parents that had really high expectations and they really wanted us to achieve. And my dad was super, super hard worker. The thing is he's a workaholic and he would admit that he works all of the time. And I think he doesn't know what it's like to not work so hard all the time. He's done it since he was like 16 years old. So that was ingrained in me and my mom, also worked really really hard and she went into a career that she really didn't like because at the time there wasn't like any jobs and so she had to go into a very non-creative career and she's a very creative person so I always witnessed her like kind of forcing herself to do that job when it was not what she enjoyed and because she worked from home there was elements of maybe not being as on top of it. Yeah, so for me, I was actually an extremely hard worker and I was very self-motivated to work, but I always, always had an interest in fashion. That was my number one love, my first passion. It still is, to be honest, and that's why I really wanna start incorporating it. I used to design my own clothes. I even made my own patterns and I sewed multiple dresses that were like complex corset style dresses. I really wanted to go to Parsons, but my parents told me, because of based on their experience, they had difficult lives where things didn't come easy to them. They had to work really, really hard to get ahead. And they felt that, you know, sacrifices have to be made and you can't really go after your passion. It might not be enough to, you know, sustain yourself. So they were just teaching me what they felt was best. They saw that I was gifted academically, if I do say so myself, but to be honest, that's the one thing that I'm very confident in is I'm really good at learning and I'm really good at school. So when they saw that I excelled in that, they really wanted to push me to be a doctor, a scientist, an engineer, even a lawyer, that sort of thing. So um, yeah, that was really, really pushed heavily on me. And although I did excel in those subjects in school, that wasn't really what I was passionate about. I'm definitely more of a creative person, which took me a really long time to figure out. So I guess that's the thing. I worked really, really hard up until probably the last few years where I had my breast implant illness and I essentially was not well enough to work as hard as I was used to and that caused me to have a lot of trauma. That was a really hard time for me. I'm just at the stage now where I've kind of become aware of all of this and fully have understood it about myself and I now know that you know it's okay to want to go after what I'm really passionate about and it's okay if what I'm passionate about changes and you can still work hard but be working on the things that you love rather than what you think is going to make you the most successful because that's what I was taught that you should work hard at what's going to make you the most successful not necessarily what you love and what you enjoy so I'm taking ownership of that and I'm I am breaking my own unhealthy work cycle and making sure that I'm prioritizing doing the things that I love and I have the opportunity to do that. I have this amazing job where I can share whatever I want so why am I not doing that and that's sort of what I've realized and I'm gonna do that from now on. I'm really gonna make that a priority and even though it's not maybe the cookie cutter way that other influencers have done things to be successful, that's okay. I just need to do what is in my heart and what is in my best interest. Yeah, I don't know if any of you guys can relate. I'm a millennial, so from our generation, I know that it's really common to have parents who they were immigrants from a different country and they had to work super hard. My dad actually, his parents were immigrants. So yeah, maybe that's where, you know, he had that fire in him sort of thing. So yeah, I know that it probably is something that some of you guys have experienced where your parents have told you that you need to do things a certain way to be successful because at the end of the day, they just want the best for you. So you are probably a perfectionist and an overachiever <laughs> if that is you. So 
we have something in common <laughs> the thing is it catches up to you so nip it in the bud now if you're on that path and make sure that you are doing things for you because you can be successful in literally anything that you choose to do we live in such a plentiful world now and a, a society that's with all of its negatives it's built up now for you to be able to do exactly what you want to do and be able to be successful at it there's plenty of success to go around you need to be confident in yourself and you need to put yourself first because you are the most important person but that is probably the most motivational of speeches you've heard from me i've had a lot of positive life lessons the last few years so have a little bit of that sort of thing to share okay anyway let's try on some clothing hi okay so quickly before i get dressed any further i wanted to show you my base layers because this is so important for dressing in the winter especially if you want to wear cute outfits with skirts and that sort of thing you have to actually be warm otherwise you just won't want to wear cute things so i'm wearing my merino wool base layer you can get these in like acrylics and you know the non-natural materials but I am a huge huge fan of natural materials they're better for the environment because they're not plastic so they will this will actually break down over time it's just breathable but warm at the same time even though it's so thin so I highly recommend it even though you're going to be paying a little bit more for it so this is from Icebreaker it's just a merino wool base layer I'm wearing tights in merino wool so warm despite them being like not totally the thickest knit love them so much so yeah i just want to do quickly show you that okay so here is the skirt it fits so well i'm so happy with it a little bit bunchy it's from the shirt in the back but yay it's just nice that i don't have to take it in this is a size six and i'm just wearing it with the flannel top from uniqlo and then i'm going to layer it over with the isabelle marron jumper est-ce que vous parlez français si vous êtes de la france qu'est-ce que vous pensez de mon de mon accent Est-ce que vous pensez que c'est très québécois? Mon français est très dur, alors ce n'est pas très bien maintenant. Je dois pratiquer. Maybe should hire a tutor. Okay, so here it is with the jumper sort of like tucked under to be cropped. I did notice Lydia was saying that this jumper has kind of a tight band, so you can pull it, fold it under, and it will stay up cropped. So that sold me as well but i think it looks so good oh my god i'm so happy oh and the thing is i scoured the internet for jumpers that were you know 100 wool with this beautiful cable knit at a lower price point or like a more affordable price point but the thing is a lot of the time with designer things you're paying for the, de the design and i was unable to find something with this bell sleeve puff sleeve at the top with a little ruching this very unique heritage beautiful cable knit design as i showed you i did find an actual heritage brand cable knit but they tend to be really classic in their designs which is wonderful and i love that but it's just hard to find something like this unless you wait like six months for it to come to the high street and then oftentimes it's made out of acrylic which you know to each their own but i just i'd rather invest in again natural materials that's going to be my new catchphrase i can tell i'm going to be saying that all the time it just makes such a difference this is so warm with this with a merino layer underneath i don't need to wear a coat with this at all i would be totally fine going out in the current three degree weather with frost on the ground just like this yes this is exactly what i envisioned in a vision i feel like i can never say that word properly okay that is so cute i just need like a little brooch or something to put here i did try it on with the hiking boots but i just thought it was a little bit too much oh you might also notice that i got rid of the little buckle that was here i kind of suspected even as i was buying it that i would just seam rip that off i wasn't a huge fan of the silver buckle i much prefer gold and i knew it wouldn't go with as much now it looks a little bit more british heritage rather than kind of like french does british i guess so yeah i much prefer it like this i just need my brother to come back so i can get a cute instagram picture he's my instagram photographer and he's actually really good at photography so he might actually be on the creative side as well oh yes with the chloe bag i love it i love it i just feel like a cute little brooch here would just make it so i might go looking online for a vintage brooch or something similar and i think the brown boots just pull out the tones of the skirt oh wow it's so cute i love it also i think that this would look even better with slightly sheer brown tights i've ordered some they're on the way as soon as i get them i'm gonna try this outfit on again because i just think the black is a little bit harsh and a little bit too dark so yeah okay next 
if you really, really needed to layer, because it was really, really cold. Right now I'm sweating and this, this definitely would be okay to wear on its own. But if you wanted to layer again, I got this incredible jacket from Merck's and Spencer. Hopefully I can link it down below for you. I got it oversized in two sizes up. So this is a size 10. I think it looks really cute. This is good too. Oh. Okay, good night. Such a great affordable coat, really nice and casual, and I love that it has a hood. I, I don't know if I can ever one afford and how I feel about getting a full sheepskin coat, so I don't mind buying imitation. These teddy coats are just not going anywhere. They've been around for like four years now. Good investment for sure. Okay guys, so I think this outfit is potentially even better than the last one. So the skirt I need to take in like by quite a lot, so I'm holding it in the back, but oh, can you see the me? So this can obviously 100% be worn with tights as well, but I was just getting way too warm. I had to remove both of my base layers with brown sheer tights. So I'm really excited for mine to come in the mail. This would look incredible and be so warm. And the boots are just the best. I'm so happy with these. They're so comfortable and I can feel they have so much ankle support and they're actual hiking boots. So they'll be so practical. I'd be able to wear these on walks, but still looking all vintage and cute this is just perfection again i need an instagram picture of this so i've just seen that these lanols are on sale they're 20 pounds down from 25 pounds so i've decided i'm gonna pick up a couple more i might send back the brown one that i have because i didn't know that it had blue in it and I'm just not the biggest fan but i'm gonna get a green one and a brownish pinkish one which i think will go really nicely with the skirt under the knit jumpers. So it looks like I'll get some Black Friday deals after all. <laughs> okay, so here is the next look and this is very, very much equestrian chic. I don't know why, I just feel like this is my style. I think it suits me perfectly and I feel really confident in it and comfortable and chic and cute. So yes, this is me. I need to just learn how to ride horses now. So I'm wearing the same flannel shirt that I was wearing before. And then I'm wearing this jacket, which is an actual riding jacket. So you can buy tweed jackets that are meant to have the look of equestrian jackets. But I decided to go for an actual riding jacket because of the fit of it. The fit is very hourglass and they're very, very tapered in. And I think that's to give that extra room when you're riding a horse because, you know, you're sat down so i'm very very happy i wanted this also it's a lot more affordable than getting 100 percent wool equestrian look jackets this was only about 100 pounds whereas everything else of high quality was in the 300 to 500 pound range so very very happy with this the only thing that i'm not a huge fan of is the buttons they're plastic so i'm definitely going to replace these for some more vintage looking maybe like brass buttons but otherwise i love the fit it's so comfortable and the material is amazing the brand is called shires and i got it off of ebay but i'll try to find one to link for you there's actual real pockets as well because these jackets need to be functional i'm wearing my mahogany fairfax and favor regina boots i think that's the style name these go with literally everything they've been one of my best purchases to date highly highly recommend them again they're an investment but they would be such a great idea to put on your wish list for christmas we are officially losing the light it goes so quickly this time of year but i wanted to show you the uniqlo cashmere roll necks these are my favorite thing to wear this time of year as soon as it gets cold enough i'll wear them and i'll wear them straight through until the spring and then when it gets a little bit warmer then i'll wear the crew neck but i absolutely love these i think these are such a classic staple in your wardrobe they are a an essential wardrobe building block they look so elegant and chic although they are a little bit pricey i'm hoping that uniqlo has a sale on these as well oh my god they are on sale and they have such a good price they're down from 80 pounds to 60 pounds so 20 pounds off what is that like a quarter off 25 percent off yeah highly highly recommend picking up a few of these in the sale i'm i'm definitely going to get a few more these start at around 80 pounds on the lowest end so uniqlo was always a really affordable option for that and i find the quality is quite good compared to other high street retailers the cashmere can be a little bit itchy and a little bit like, sheer whereas i find the quality of these is really good really really soft and not sheer at all and they wash really well 
and I always just wash my cashmere on a woolen setting which is the coldest setting with specific silk wool detergent and they come out fine and I just hang them to dry like I do everything else but I wanted to show you that because I think this is a really nice option I got these in two other colors so I got them in this olive green color this has been my most worn i just can't recommend it enough i got a size extra extra small it fits like a uk6 which is my size and here is the wine colored one such a beautiful color they act it actually matches these jeans really really well so i could wear this for a full monochromatic look which i think looks nice but they also look good just with regular jeans by the way i am wearing a fashion nova jeans these are just the only ones that actually fit my waist and i feel like they come in a lot of good color options okay so here's how it looks tucked in i'll usually wear it with jeans that have the little belt holes so that i can wear a belt but i think this is just such a nice casual outfit i love it and it looks really nice with the knee-high boots i think a bunch of the chloe test bags are on sale right now so if you were interested in just having a look i'll leave a link down below it comes in tons of different colors and i think some of them are up to 20% off, I want to say, so it might be worth checking out. So again, with this coat from m &S, it's so cozy. You can see the details up close here, the little toggles. I probably wouldn't even do up the zip. I'd probably just do these up. Okay, so here is another outfit that I've been loving. I've worn this a couple of times, even though it's really statement. This piece is from Holland Cooper. It's absolutely stunning. This is the first piece that I invested in from them. It's a luxury item, so it is a luxury price tag. It's beautiful quality and it makes such a statement and it really just goes with my overall style and wardrobe. I know that I'm going to be reaching for this year after year after year even though it is really statement, it's just something that, I don't know, I just feel really pretty in it, like really cute, and the details on it are beautiful. You do really get what you pay for with Holland Cooper. To me, it's worth every single penny, and I would usually say invest in something that is a classic piece that you can wear over and over and over again. This is so statement that I wouldn't be able to get away with wearing this every day, but because it brings me so much joy, it's worth just wearing a few times through the fall and the winter and maybe even the spring. It's a pretty thin wool tweed material, so it's not a super thick wool, but it does provide warmth and I'm wearing the cashmere jumper underneath. I could get away with wearing a chunkier knit and I can always layer with my base layer if it's gonna be really cold, but decided to pair the cape with these white Fashion Nova jeans. Again, I'll link them down below, just standard. I wear a size one or a size three, either work for me. I paired it with my suede Fairfax and Favorite boots, which I showed you earlier. These are in the Regina style, the same as my dark brown ones, and I just absolutely adore them. Oh, I love this look so much. I know it's not for everyone, but it just makes me really, really happy. And it's very close in color to the Dubry skirt. You can even layer them and just look like a Scottish princess. So I'll show you the details up close. This is a sheepskin collar. It's just like leather in my opinion. Sheepskin is used all the time for suede, if you've ever had Ugg boots, that sort of thing. Obviously not for vegans, not for everybody, but I don't mind if it's just a little trim. So this is suede here and suede on the collar which you can do up and it's got the beautiful holland cooper signature gold buttons and zip and it's leather lined here and it's just absolutely stunning oh, it's got usable pockets just look at how beautiful that is yes 100 percent yes might as well have fun with fashion that is the point so there's one last outfit that i want to show you it's the last three investment pieces that i purchased for this season and i think i am done now it's unlikely that i'm going to make any more big purchases so this is it i know it's a lot in one video i've been open with the fact that i was planning on purchasing higher price point items that are classic and that are going to last in my wardrobe and work really hard and therefore the cost per wear will make it worth the price that i pay at least that's how i justify it no i actually i've done that from previous seasons and I don't regret it whatsoever. I've been so, so happy with everything that I bought and I think I made a really well thought through and good purchases. So yeah, but I just wanted to kind of let you know these are things that I did actually buy starting in September. So I didn't buy everything all at once. It, I gradually bought them over time. I'm really happy with my wardrobe now and I think I've got really, really good staple classic items that were best to buy in the highest possible quality because I can then keep them and keep going back to them year after year after year. As I mentioned earlier, I had always planned to buy one pair of designer boots 
as an investment, something that I would feel incredible in and that would elevate my outfit and just make me feel amazing and be of really high quality and be something that I would cherish year after year. So I definitely checked that box with my Chloe boots, which I'm going to show you in a second with this outfit. I wanted to invest in coats, so I knew that I wanted to buy a really, really high quality coat this year, whether that be designer or more on the premium market, just something that was 100% wool that would keep me warm and was tailored beautifully and that would fit my silhouette perfectly. And because I didn't have very many coats, I was happy to also buy a few coats that were like more affordable, like the MS coat that I showed you earlier. And finally, I wanted to invest in knitwear. So I showed the Isabel Mahan jumper earlier and the Erin knit jumpers I bought and this is another piece. This is a cashmere roll neck midi jumper dress. I have been searching for this literally since August I think. I've been googling and searching and scouring the internet for this exact dress so when it came up and I saw that it was Max Mara I knew that it would have a really big price tag but Max Mara is such an incredible brand especially for wools and cashmere is very elegant classic looking silhouettes. I knew I would regret it if I let this one go so I did end up investing in this. I just knew from last year I wore my midi roll neck dresses so much and they were all from high street brands and while I did try to get like non-acrylic ones like more like polyamide and like cotton blends they would only look really nice and beautiful and presentable for a few washes even though I take incredible care of my knitwear after that you know you could start to see that they weren't of the highest quality which I think is fine it depends like what stage you're in um, with your wardrobe investment but I'm definitely in the stage where I'm transitioning into pieces that I'll have for life so I knew that this cashmere dress was the one and something that is going to look beautiful forever. All right, the millionth rant of the day over and I'll actually show you what it looks like. Okay, so here is the look. So the dress is quite a relaxed fit, which I really, really like actually. Sometimes it's nice not to have everything form fitted. A little bit more casual and laid back and just cozy and nice. Oh, it feels incredible and it's the perfect length. I'm petite, so I think on the model is probably hitting more up there so at the top of the boots but I sort of like it to hit below the knee for me that's exactly what I was looking for so yes it is absolute perfection it does have little buttons down the side here so you can open up the neck so I just wanted to show you how it looks just on its own but I would actually sometimes style it with the Gucci belt so with the boots and the belt I just love it I'm pretty sure Josie has all three of these items as well. We just have to hope that we never show up wearing head to toe the same thing the next time we see each other. Hopefully after lockdown, that would be really nice to meet up again. So that's how it looks with the belt. I've got a really small waist, so it does bunch up a little bit. I could probably loosen the belt so it doesn't do that as much. Honestly, if you've never tried cashmere, you need to try it. It is the best material. It's so warm, but it's breathable. It has all of the qualities of natural materials and wool, but it is just the softest, most glorious material ever. This is just my dream winter outfit. And then with the glowy bag, the matching bag and boots. So if I step back, maybe you can Okay, so the very last thing that I wanted to show you is this coat. I was also scouring the internet for this exact style of coat I really wanted. Again, the British style, because I knew it would fit in with my wardrobe perfectly. So I was on Pinterest, pinning a bunch of kind of like vintage Ralph Lauren ads, a bunch of equestrian sort of inspired clothing, and I ended up coming across a picture of a coat, which was exactly what I was looking for, and it had a gorgeous feminine silhouette. I did a little bit more digging and research and I found it was by a British designer named Catherine Hooker. It turns out that she's designed a bunch of coats that Kate Middleton has worn so she's very much a British brand. She's based in London and I had a look at her current collection and I saw this coat and it was literally the exact coat that I was looking for so I just had to order it. It is um, a designer price but it is not outrageous for a designer price. Like a Gucci coat would run you 2,000 plus pounds, which I know is just cringeworthy and unnecessary for most people, but her beautiful coats, which are made in England, like you just would not be able to find something like this on the high street, and it was exactly what I wanted. So I'll show you how it looks on, and I think this is the perfect outfit to wear it with. See, the thing is, it hurts me to purchase things that are that cost this much money. Like, trust me, it is very hard to do. I mull over it for months, usually, 
and it's like pulling the trigger when I do actually purchase it but when I get the items and I see the quality in person and I try them on and I just feel how incredible the garments feel it just reminds me why I love fashion and why I wanted to go into fashion to begin with and why I wanted to design beautiful clothes and it just makes me appreciate the designers and all of the hard work that they put in and the sourcing of the materials and everything and it makes me understand why the, they're priced so high and I think there is a lot of markup in the industry especially with those brands where you're paying for the brand like for Gucci, Chanel, etc. But you are paying for the brand so you're you're buying into that brand and you're buying the history of the brand and you know the luxury of the brand because you know that's why they exist that's that's why they charge the prices they do it's because they have a sort of allure and a luxurious feel but at the end of the day you are getting quality for it there just might be a markup depending on the brand this gorgeous brand so Katherine Hooker she's still a small business and she has limited numbers of items this is not sponsored by the way none of this was sponsored and I appreciate the design and the work that goes into everything she does which I mean, I can only assume it's, it's probably her and a small team. You know, I'm willing to pay the price for something like this. There isn't that markup on it. So you do get gorgeous pieces without the crazy, crazy high price point. So to me, it is 100% worth it. I hope my head wasn't cut off the whole time I was talking. I can't really see the viewfinder. This is a stunning wool tweed houndstooth pattern. Fitted, tailored wrap coat. So it comes with a belt, which I think is perfect because I could either wear the belt that it comes with or I could wear this belt over top of the coat, which I think would look equally stunning. I could wear it open just like this, beautiful. Or you can do up the coat and because it is a beautiful feminine tailored silhouette, it just fits the body incredibly the perfect fit. I think the only issue is that the sleeves are a little bit long on me so I think she does offer free alterations so as soon as I can get to London post lockdown I would go to the boutique and see if I can get the sleeves shortened a little bit just because I'm <laughs> petite and I've got short arms. I actually feel like how I imagine Kate Middleton feels when she wears her beautiful dress coats because it's a sort of tweed houndstooth pattern. It does lend it to a more casual look. It is just I just, I have no words, honestly. Please let me know what you guys think. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. A little bit more extra, but if there's wind, you can turn up the collar. And underneath, there's this gorgeous burgundy suede, similar to Holland Cooper. Get the attention to detail, as you would expect if you're paying that sort of price. But my goodness, this coat is just, it's just something else. Like, this is something that I will have for the rest of my life and be so happy invested in this. And I can pass this down to my daughters and maybe even granddaughters i think that it's it was a worthy investment and i honestly i'm just really happy to afford to be able to invest in small designer boutiques like that because it is at the end of the day supporting a small business so that's it and i couldn't be happier with my investment pieces i think i'm not in focus there we go yeah so incredibly happy with everything that I invested in for it this season. I'm excited to get to do some Instagram pictures with all of these looks. That would be really fun and it would be nice to get to show off the outfit. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get changed for this because I'm absolutely dying of heat. All right, so it's a little bit later now and I managed to tidy up this room a little bit and do some rearranging. Put in my new hiking boots there and my new boots are all down there. So very pleased with that. It's completely dark now and as soon as it gets dark for the night at around 4.30, 5 p.m., I start to get so tired and I just wanna make dinner and chill for the rest of the night. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Ben is in the gym right now, so I'm gonna start dinner so that by the time he's out, it's ready and we can just have dinner together. And lately we've been watching, well, we just rewatched the Lord of the Rings trilogy. It is my favorite movies of all time. I think they are the greatest cinematic masterpieces of all time. I've read pretty much all of the Tolkien books. The Hobbit was the first novel that I ever read as a child. It just has a really special place in my heart and I love watching it and I try to watch it almost every winter. We didn't watch it last year so it was really fun and exciting to watch it this year. We finished that so now we're on the Hobbit trilogy which I know isn't as good but we just wanted more Middle Earth drama so yeah I think we're gonna watch that and probably just go to bed because Ben and I we like to have early night as often as possible because we both get up really early. He gets up at 5 36 and I get up at 6 6 30. That is all that I'm gonna do today. I've left on my gorgeous cashmere jumper dress. I just couldn't take it off. It's too comfy and cozy and 
oh, it's just the best thing ever that's everything from me today i really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and you found it a good mixture of everything i'd love to know what you think so please let me know in the comments below and i will see you in my next video which is going to be the big announcement i'm so excited i just cannot wait to tell you guys honestly at this point i just want to share the news and start a new exciting amazing chapter in life and i'm so excited to bring you guys along with the journey i will see you in that video and thanks so much for watching bye